Fast and Furious is the name of the game as the world's top automakers reveal their newest hot cars at the 2017 North American International Auto Show over at Cobo Hall. Here are four of the big reveals so far. Ford announced they are reviving the Ford Bronco and Ford Ranger pickup truck. Chevy unveiled a brand new redesign for their 2018 Traverse. Honda got back into that minivan game with its newest version of the Honda Odyssey. And yesterday, VW announced their new microbus with the look of a van from the 60s, but with all the bells and whistles of modern cars. Most of these vehicles are expected to hit dealerships later this year. Arad Maloney is live at Cobo Hall, catching up with some of the movers and shakers in the auto industry. An exciting day today, Rod. That's Karen. You know, uh, look, I'm here at the uh, Ram stand, the Dodge Ram, the 1500, and this is the truck sort of at the center of everything that FCA CEO Sergio Marchione had to talk about today. The plant where it's built, the plant where it's going to, what comes to the plant behind it, and all kinds of other important things for people here in Metro Detroit. But he also was talking about President-elect Trump, his Twitter feed and how he got praise for Chrysler, how he had praise for Chrysler today and his reaction to it. If I ever start tweeting, shoot me. <laughs> no Twitter fan. FCA CEO Sergio Marchione wasn't shy about the decision he made really more than a year ago about the Warren truck plant. Its current vehicle, the Ram 1500, will move to Sterling Heights. And his announcement last night about putting the Jeep Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer, both vehicles we've not even seen yet here, was not because of Donald Trump, but the result still is positive. It's 2,000 new jobs that did not exist before. It's likely the majority of them will go to Toledo on the launch of the Global Wrangler. He's adding another Wrangler plant because he can't keep up with demand. We don't see the new SUVs coming from Warren for a while, though, because it's a very old plant and is going to need a massive conversion. It needs substantial intervention into the paint shop, the whole assembly process needs to be completely rethought through because of size requirements um, for the Wagoneer and the wa and Grand Wagoneer coming in. So that will take us into 19. The Wrangler story gets complicated by the notion of tariffs the president-elect appears ready to impose. Restrictive distribution practices, which, which unfortunately are going to run against the tariff world, are unhelpful. And so it may force a resizing of our commitment to the U.S. simply because of the fact that I cannot take it outside. Now, Marchione had one other thing to say, among many, that, that was important. He said that he did not slight the show by revealing a car out in Las Vegas last week, and instead, he says he'll be back with reveals here at the North American International Auto Show. In fact, the replacement for this vehicle is what he says that he'll be announcing next year. So he is not insulting the North American International Auto Show by not having reveals here this year. Reporting live at the North American International Auto Show, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right. Thank you, Rod. And our coverage of the auto show is just getting started tonight at 5. Why mobility could be the key to the future of the auto industry. At 6 p.m., more details on the big Ford reveals. And then at 10 o'clock, Devin Skillion and Kimberly Gill host a special Dateline Detroit, giving you a complete preview of what to expect at this year's show.